a message to ask any questions to our, to our panelists today. Our topic will be discussing uh, being involved as a student. Many of you coming on um, this evening surely are trying to find ways or what to do more or what's it like to be involved. And today we got two panelists who are some very exemplary physical therapists in our field um, who served when they were students. And they're gonna be discussing today uh, how, how that um, has helped them to where they are now. Also, we're gonna put there in the chat uh, feature a link to a Google Doc uh, where you can share your uh, student social media handles. That way we, you can you know, connect um, uh, with each other and continue the conversations uh, that you can build from, from being a member and from being with an APTA um, and engaging with the student network. So thank you for everybody who's able to come on today. Um, now I'm gonna introduce our panelists. We have Dan here and also Cecily, and we'll start off first with Cecily. Well, first, thank you so much for having us. That's so great that you're doing this and we all love Sabad so much and have it's been so, so foundational in our world and our leadership world and our clinic world. So I appreciate having us and getting to connect with you here. Um, so I'm Cecily DeSepno and I am a private practice owner in Northern Virginia. I work in outpatient orthopedics and also uh, I put the pelvis back in the body. So also pelvic health as well. And I started my journey back in 2000, 2001 on Sabad. I was a director there and it was fantastic. And I'll tell you more about my story um, a little bit later, but that's, that's who I am and, and how I got my start. Thank you for that. Let's go on to Dan, please. Awesome, thank you so much. It's so nice to share the stage, first of all, with Cecily, who I consider a friend and mentor. Uh, and then to also be here with all of you, both the, the Sabad members and those that are interested. Uh, my name is Daniel Dale. I am a clinical assistant professor at Mercer University. I'm also the assistant director of clinical education. Uh, my time on the board was back in 2010, 2011. I served as the, the student assembly president in that time. Uh, prior to that, had served in my state chapter in Georgia. And then from there, have gone on uh, to further service. And I can thank the, the student assembly and my, my time there went on to further service and just completed my term as president of APTA Georgia, uh, actually two weeks ago. So enjoying a little bit more free time that I've had on my hands since then and, and helping get our uh, incoming president, Dr. Kathleen Geist up to speed, but we are in great hands here in Georgia. And, and again, I'm excited to talk with all of you tonight about student opportunities. Thank you so much for those wonderful introductions. And again, thank you for being here. Again, students, this month, we have applications open up. So these two former Sabad members are gonna start telling us a little bit about why they got engaged from, the, from when they started as students. But also feel free to ask your questions, put them in the chat box or raise your hand and we'll, we'll, we'll get you there uh, to say it out loud. Um, and if you feel like you need to also, please feel free to message it uh, to, uh, to me directly and then we can get that uh, asked away. But I wanted to ask for both of y'all um, and, Cecily, we'll start off with you. Why did you get involved as a student? Like, why? You got so much stuff to do. You got classes and all this crazy stuff. Why? So true. So I took a tour at APTA with my university, and I was just completely inspired and in awe by the people that were working there. You know, people like Lisa, who are working there and working so hard, some of which were PTs, PTAs, and others who weren't. And they were so passionate and so engaged in making the world a better place. And I was particularly inspired by um, those who were in the governance, you know, who were government affairs um, at that time. And it was just amazing to see all of the things, how they were moving healthcare forward in so many ways with so much enthusiasm. Everyone was fun, fun to be around. They all were happy, they loved their jobs and were really engaged with us. And so after, um, after my tour there, I um, applied for the Charlie Harker internship and I took an internship at ABTA. So I started working there um, in the department and I, I really enjoyed my time there. I got to go down to the Hill and do some work in policy uh, as well as at that point we had, um, a women's, I think it was called Women's Initiative Department. And I worked some in there and as I said, government affairs, so I could see uh, what we were doing. And it, it was just really inspiring to be able to be a part of that. So that got me started. Then I, as um, Dan was kind of talking about, I got engaged locally at my local district 
started serving on the board there. And then I, from there, I went to the chapter level. So I'm in Virginia and we have a lot of movers and shakers here that are really involved with ABTA and have been for many years. So I got involved at the chapter level. And then um, from there, I went on to, to do some more APTA things and also with um, served on task force and committees. And then with the, um, at that time, it was called the section on women's health. And then I went on, I served in the House of Delegates for, I think I'm up to my 12th year now. Um, yay. And I was a student usher. So if you have the opportunity to do that, you should. It's so much fun, so much fun. And you learn so many things about policy and where the profession's headed and where society's headed and how can we be a part of it. So the House of Delegates was really integral. And from there, I ended up serving on the ABTA nominating committee. And then I have just recently come back to, yay, NOMCOM forever. Once NOMCOM, always NOMCOM. It is the most important job, you know. Um, but anyway, it, it's it's great to shape leaders and to be a part of that leadership. And then now I'm back with um, what was the section on women's health, but is now the Academy of Pelvic Health Physical Therapy. And I'm coming off as president. Um, so now I'm past president of that section academy. So that's sort of my story. And I cannot tell you how it's shaped my life and my practice and now I'm doing research um, with NIH, and it's just really been all because of my start at ABTA. So, Dan, what do you? What's your story? So my mine's a very similar one, but I think the interesting part about mine, and Gustavo mentioned this to all of you who are listening. You know, you've got to put yourself out there and ask a question, and and that's actually where mine started. So I can remember the exact moment. Uh, I was at an APTA Georgia meeting, then the Physical Therapy Association of Georgia in on a student meeting. And at that time, there were some fellow student assembly members, and I didn't know anything about the student assembly, but we had a few from Georgia. Uh, Dr. Kate Hamilton, Dr. Becca Sanders-Fong, and Dr. Meg Canali were there. And I don't think I knew what I was asking about, but I asked a question. I was in the student SIG meeting, they were talking about APTA, and I asked a question. Apparently, that lit a spark between the three of them where they wanted to talk to me more and get me more involved. And that's really what your student assembly board of directors that are on the call tonight, they get you involved. They have that energy and they wanna find ways to help you. So I asked a question and from there, ended up serving as, as student president because I really found uh, a desire to help fellow students to inform them of what's going on. I think one of the most important things we've seen and especially over these past few years is the importance of not only having a voice but knowing how to make your voice heard. You know, all of us as members of the association have a voice, but sometimes it's finding where your voice can be heard and where you can find where your passion kind of leads you. Um, and that was what I found. I asked a question. I started figuring out that I really liked kind of governance, politics, and leadership within the association. And that moved me into finding my passion. Uh, again, from there, I, I've kind of taken a similar path to Cecily. I, I've served as delegate in the House of Delegates for APTA Georgia. I've served as chief delegate. Um, I have gone through and served on uh, the NEXT programming committee, which NEXT doesn't even exist anymore, but Cecily and I served together on that conference programming where we got to meet a lot of great speakers and, and engage with people there. Um, and then have just kind of found my passion now in education. So I, I can honestly say, as someone who started uh, into education, I'm now going on my, my fifth year of teaching, I probably would not be in teaching if it weren't for my student involvement. It started me down a path of really understanding APTA and the resources that are available and how to better myself in education uh, as well as practice. So I, I, I am also just in awe of all of the opportunities I've had of having served in student leadership and, and just love that we're able to talk about this tonight. But again, I can't stress enough, ask your question. Ask the questions tonight because we'll find a way to help engage you on the things you're passionate about. No, oh, thank you both for, for sharing that information, sharing kind of that background of your why. Because um, that's something so important, um, you know, that's been told to us by, you know, just different individuals who, who are talking about purpose. What's your why? What, what got you, what gets you motivated? What picks you up? Um, so I want to ask you now, now that we got a little bit about that why, um, if you could go back, what would be an advice that you would tell your student self? Like, you know, now you, you look back and yeah, it was easy, you know, we did that and we got involved and one thing led to another. But during that time, there, there had to be some kind of doubts. Maybe there was some kind of fear or, or somebody might've been pushing you maybe not to do something. 
what would be something you would tell your student self when trying to make that decision of, of just starting to get involved? I know, Cecily, you talked about first you started with um, the internship. Um, did you have any pushback or, uh, or was everybody encouraging you at the time? Great question. Well, back then, um, you know, in the days of flip phones, so <laughs> we should start with communication, I guess. Um, but I think, you know, I would probably tell my, myself not to be afraid to fail, I think, because there were some opportunities, you know, going downtown and sitting in a room where they were, where the, the politicians down on the hill are making decisions, it was really intimidating at times um, to be sort of right in school, not to necessarily be the smartest person in the room. And if you are the smartest person in the room, maybe you're in the wrong room. Um, like I'm very honored to be here with all of you because I know you have a lot of wisdom to impart and kind of helping Dan and I now, where, where are you? Where are you gonna take us? You're our future. And we're very excited about the innovation you have. But I think, I think don't be afraid to fail. Don't be afraid to you know, go downtown and, and go to these policy meetings and where the decisions are being, you know, if you have the opportunities, you should take the opportunities and, and not be afraid that you might not be the smartest person in the room. You might not know all the answers and that's okay to say, I don't know. I don't know the answer to that. I'll have to get back to you. Um, unfortunately, we can't just look it up on our phone or text our friend back then. So um, it was a little bit harder to get the information, but now we can, I mean, we have the technology and we have the opportunities and they are gonna come. And so I think that would be probably some good advice I would give myself. Dan, what you got? Teach me something. Sadly, I still had a flip phone in 2010 and my board actually would make fun of me for it. I ended up getting an iPhone by the end. I had to by necessity. Um, so I learned a lesson along the way and it's something that I share with my students. It's a, I, I always say it's a terrible analogy for any health profession students, but I think definitely for physical therapy. But I talk about seeing our profession as a buffet. It's, it's kind of an endless buffet of options. And as a student, you've got to know that really you want to engage in that buffet. And that's taking a chance on APTA and, and your profession and what you want to do with it. You know, there are a lot of times we talk about sometimes people struggle to see the value of membership. And a lot of times I ask, well, what have you done to engage in that membership? Because it's not really it's all out there. You can go take advantage of anything that you want on it. And a lot of times we get the, you know, maybe we haven't had a chance to engage or people don't know how to engage. Uh, so think of it as that buffet that you're taking your empty plate up there and APTA has got all these offerings, the academies, your local chapters, all of the special interest groups, all of the different educational opportunities. Take yourself, give yourself a trip to the buffet and, and step up. And, and from that, the lessons I've learned is one, you've got to sample a little bit of everything. But the other mistake that people always make at the buffet, and I think I made this early as a student, was I took on too much on my plate. Allow yourself to really focus on those things that you're passionate about. At the buffet, what's the best dish you can have? And really allow yourself to engage in that. And then see where it goes. Maybe you decide that's not for you. A lot of us, the beauty of, of physical therapy is you can change. There's a lot of things you can do in this profession. You can change along the way. And that's the same thing with leadership. I think allow yourself that flexibility to engage in the things that you want to see and then allow yourself that flexibility then to engage in opportunities when it's that time. Man, y'all talking about buffets right now. Y'all getting me a little hungry. Um, also, students who are on right now, please put in the chat what year you are, what school you are. Give us a little bit about yourself so, so our panelists here can just kind of Kind of see where everybody's from, all right? Year in school. Um, so talking about those, you know, talking about those buffets, and 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 Dan, you bring up a very good point. I I feel like I I'm too much of a yes man sometimes, and I've definitely had to learn to say no, <laughs> and and the power of that no. I got to do that at the buffet too, uh, as well as uh, you know, keep that belly down. But um, but no, I I I you know, even when when I got involved. Um, the, you know, all those opportunities that exist. And, and I think even more things have been growing, right? Um, even currently right now, uh, we have, you know, opportunities with, with uh, advocacy uh, or project committees and, and, and a new one being the DEI initiative that going on through the board of directors. So um, always um, different things uh, to get involved with. And, and like Dan said, and Cecily, you know, you want to learn more about involvement, connect with us, connect with me, Teo, uh, or Patrick on the NOMCOM or another board member, and we can definitely help you find what that passion is. And as I've always told students is um, 
is if you see an opportunity, go for it. But if you see there's a void, if, if there's something that's needed, then just go make it freaking happen, you know? Uh, start, start working on, on, on something you're, that you see that you're passionate about and, and, and bring that forward and, and collaborate with us uh, in order to help our profession. Um, we got a question here from Lindsay and I advise all you guys as well, ask your questions, put them in the chat or raise your hand. We'll, we will, we'll, we'll, we can get you on here live. But uh, uh, Lindsay had a question here. It says, what do you recommend for people who want to get involved, but don't get elected or selected for a position? Lindsay, this is one of my favorite questions. So I'm so excited that you asked that. Being non-com, um, I know you can appreciate this too. Um, basically, it's, it's a great opportunity if you don't get elected to something because you put yourself out there, you learn a lot through the process, you meet a lot of great people. And even, even at the national level, we put out a slate and people don't get elected. I mean, I mean, brilliant, amazing people just like you perhaps don't get elected. And then what do you do? As Dan pointed out, you have special interest groups in all of the organizations. And I know Sabat is doing some amazing things as he just pointed out with DEI, there's tons of opportunities of committees and task forces and special interest groups to get involved with. And there's so much work to be done. I mean, when I was um, on the board, when I was on Sabad back in 2000, we were dealing with things like, you know, at the House of Delegates, we were talking about things like, you know, the doctor enter, entering into a doctoring profession. So not everyone was a DPT then. We were just talking about it. And so we were able to, there's task forces and committees and um, special interest groups that were relating to things like that. Um, things like direct access. You know, the people on those committees and those task forces have made direct access possible for us over the years. And, um, you know, other things, residencies, fellowships were just coming on board at that time. And those people who, who weren't necessarily on the board, but who were willing to be on these task forces and committees and special interest groups made these things possible. So there's a lot of amazing things that can happen, even if you're not you're on these other um, organizational groups, so. I would add to that, you know, and it's a great question, Lindsay. First of all, to those that are elected, it's their job to engage those that aren't elected. That's really what this whole thing is about, is, is that you're not elected to some leadership position just out there on an island. Your job is to engage everybody else in the process. Um, I think of the two people that I ran against, and I still know what both of them are doing, you know, 11 years later when I ran for the Student Assembly Board, I know what they're doing, and they were engaged and still are in the profession, um, and still great friends to me, but that, if you're not in elected, it's not a defeat, it's just a decision that it's time to go pursue something else for the time being, and you really have to look at what is your passion, what was your reason for running, and what are you gonna do about that? You know, If you're not elected to the Student Assembly Board, there are still so many avenues that you can go through to engage in that passion. And we need every voice within the profession. Um, I think I put in the chat, You know, start locally, look at your state chapter, your student SIGs, uh, look at your academies for some of those special interest groups that they have. But there are so many opportunities that, you know, Student Assembly, although awesome, and, and some of the most fun times of my life, there's so many other opportunities to engage that nothing should be defeated just if you're not elected. Oh, thank you for sharing that. Um, yes, guys, get out there, apply. Um, because we get to see you, we get to interact with you. And especially during these times when, when we don't even get to interact personally, um, this is a great opportunity to expand and, 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 and making, a, making it a jumping stone as well. Um, so at the moment, we're going to have a, a few announcements. We're going to have uh, Teo come on. He's going to give us a few announcements. And then after that, we'll get back on with this, with these panelists. So please get those questions queued up, you know, type them up or, or raise your hand there. Use the raise hand feature and we'll get you queued up to, to ask these awesome panelists because they got wealth of information, y'all. They got gold. And this is your time to ask now. So don't be shy. Don't be afraid. Hit the, you know, hit that, hit, hit that interview. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's pass it on to Teo. Probably unmuted. I was trying to use my space bar, it didn't work. But what's going on, everyone? I hope you are doing well. I currently serve as a nominating committee chair elect. And so I will be working along with Gustavo and Patrick to create the next slate for the upcoming Student Assembly Board of Directors elections. So I'm just gonna go through a few announcements that we have for tonight. 
The first one that we have is that ABTA along with EBS will be hosting a virtual ABTA Knowledge Bowl, and that's going to be powered by SCORE Builders. This is going to happen on Wednesday, June 30th at 7 p.m. Eastern Time. So in this event, there's going to be 10 teams that will be selected from DPT programs across the country to compete in a high energy quiz show style event. And essentially some of the content that will be on here could potentially appear on the MPTE and it could help everyone prepare for the exam. So even if you aren't a part of this program, audience participation is going to be very crucial. So please join, we will have a link for that event. And at the end of the day, this is an opportunity for you to learn. So I highly recommend being a part of this. And then the team registration was opened to about 58 reach 100 DPT programs this past week. And if um, currently there are four spots left for the Knowledge Bowl. So again, we will be promoting that out to all of the uh, DPT programs to submit a uh, team to compete if there are more available spots. The second thing that we have upcoming is the APTA Live on May 23rd at 7 p.m. Eastern time, expanding your student experience, student involvement. So we are talking about it right now from the experience of Dan, Daniel and Cicely, but also we have Gustavo, Patrick, Hannah, and Lindsay, where they're gonna be talking about student elections and getting involved as a student and how that can impact your professional career. So definitely be on the lookout for that APTA Live on the 23rd. Lastly, we have the Student Assembly Board of Applications opening, or they are open and they will last until May 31st. So please reach out to the nominating committee, which is myself, Gustavo and Patrick for more information on how to apply or certain particular positions and we can definitely get you connected with the right people. And then also we have on Instagram, there are takeovers from each person on the current Student Assembly Board of Directors. And thank you again, big, big shout out to Lindsay for coordinating all of that because when I tell you that she put a lot of effort into explaining how we could go through the takeover and give you all of the right content for our positions and how to actually edit things. So definitely a big shout out to Lindsay, our current director of communications. Uh, that is all the announcements that we have today. But again, I really wanna emphasize the election. So please reach out to either one of us on the nominating committee, as well as the people who are on the board. So we have Lindsay here, we have Chase, we have the nominee, we have Sydney. So if you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Thank you for that, Tail. And yes, Lindsay, that IG, IG takeover, she literally made a document for us detailing out how to record yourself and then closed captioning because it, I was like, okay, like this is something that actually helped me do some of my other side videos. I, I didn't even know closed captioning existed. Uh, <laughs> made life tons easier. So, so thank you again, Lindsay. Um, and I hope to see you guys there for our APTA Knowledge Bowl provided by Score Builders. Those questions there will be some MPTE stuff. So just kind of getting you prepared. You know what I'm saying? Um, so, all right, we're going we're gonna to get back to the panelists. All right. We have some few, uh, a couple of questions there. Oh, Dan asked a question to participants. You guys are going to have to answer this now. Come on. He says, uh, what's your favorite leadership buffet dish? What are you passionate about in leadership? That has to be part of your go-to meal. So please, please help Dan it with this. All right, don't don't leave him hanging. Come on, y'all, don't leave him hanging. Type it in, okay? Um, let's go to Chase's question. What barriers do you do you find exist for new graduates? So new graduates looking to get involved after the wealth of opportunities available as students. And what is your advice to overcoming those barriers? Dan, why don't you go first? You want me to jump in on this one? All right, so I'm, I'm gonna try and blow. All y'all minds on this one. There are no barriers to you getting involved. The barriers are self-made. If you think they're there, then there are barriers to you getting involved. But I will tell you up and down how I've watched the association change both within our own chapter and, and other chapters as well. People are passionate for new energy, for, for your new ideas that you're coming out with, with the innovation, with the leadership that you're coming forth. So again, if there are barriers, they're self-made and you've got to find a way to start breaking those barriers down. That means doing what you can to get involved, whether that's volunteering your time. You know, I think a lot of people bring up the barrier of, oh, you've got to be a, a DPT for a couple of years before you can serve or do this. No, 
you have to put in the time and the effort to get acquainted with the position. You may not win if you run for delegate as a new graduate, if you've never done anything with the House of Delegates and you haven't worked in your chapter. That may not happen. But if you've volunteered and you've participated in House of Delegates calls and you've been acquainted with the membership and you're working on things within the chapter, you've got a good chance of being elected even as a new graduate. And that was my story. You know, 2011, I got elected to our executive office and to, uh, to our House of Delegates for Georgia. I was a delegate. Um, it was just because I'd been involved with the, the chapter. So those are the things I think you've got to do is break down those barriers and know that chapters are looking for you to be involved. Academies and sections are looking for you to be involved. There's so many opportunities. And once you get past that kind of imposter syndrome and you break down those barriers of, yeah, I do belong here and I have some great ideas, you start finding those people to connect with that can help you. And, and I'm laughing because I see one of them on the call. I see Joe Black's on the call, who is a dear friend to Cecily and I's. Joe was a mentor of mine that I just kept picking at and saying, Joe, how do I get involved? What do I do? How do I get further into this? Those are the things you've got to do. You've got to find those, those mentors, those people that can help you and put yourself out there. But I, I think for me, sure, there are going to be some barriers, but you have every opportunity as a new grad to break those barriers down. I'd like to hear Joe Black answer that question. <laughs> Come on, Joe, don't stay quiet now. We saw you pop in. I am. <laughs> okay. Uh, gosh, Dan, you, you you said it so well. I mean, you just show up. Uh, it, I'm you know I'm I'm the old guy in the room, and I've just I just wanted to listen. Lisa, Lisa let me in to. I just wanted to listen because Dan and Cecily both did such great uh, uh, careers as as advocates and engaged members of the association. But you know, you, you show up. And don't wait for somebody to ask you to do something. Volunteer. I mean, just raise your hand and say, I'll do the job. Well said. Thanks, Joe. Thank you. So Joe. I just think that, um, you know, kind of like Creed and, and what Dan was saying, you know, the guy in the mirror, that's your biggest opponent. So I agree with Dan there. But I will say, you know, it is hard when I remember when I was a student and then transitioning at the local level and I was really involved at the student level. And then, you know, I was out there and it seemed like the resources are less spoon fed. You know, when I was in school, the school gave me information, ABTA gave me information. And then as a new grad, it's like, okay, now what do I do? How do I get information? Where do I get information? How do I get involved making the connections? How do I find out who to connect with and where to connect? And I think that's where, um, you know, what's great about the times that we're living in is that we have technology at our disposal. So it's all right there. You know, we were looking at um, at ABTA student members on Instagram and, and there's lots of ways to connect with people who can continue to help you be engaged. And that's why one of the questions that I put on here was, what do you want us to know about you so we can help be better mentors and promoters? One of the things Joe and I and Dan talk a lot about is how can we better promote you and support you as you get out there? And I, and I think the way that Dan said, you wanna get involved with your local, you wanna stay involved with the people you met through Sabad, through the student assembly. You wanna stay involved with those people and then, and then get involved with your local people as well. But now you just look to social media and all of the different um, APTA hashtags and, and the different places on Instagram and, and other avenues, as you well know, that you can connect with people and people want to connect with you. We can't say that enough. We wanna connect with you um, and help you, you know, and help you find your passion. Okay. Thank you for that. Students on the call, remember, you have something special in you. You have ideas, you have backgrounds, you have innovative creations that are just that just need to come out, so don't be afraid. This is a great platform to use that by applying for the board of directors. And even if you don't get accepted, that doesn't mean you can't still use those ideas and push them forward. Because how much of it, how, we, trying to say this, and, and not to offend anybody, not, Joe, you're still young. You're still young blood in my heart. Uh, I remember seeing him when I first met him, it was actually at, at, at one of the uh, events after hours. Um, that I was introduced to Joe and he was out there, he was grooving to the music. So, I, so he, he, he's still he's young, he's real young. Um, but with you as being students, have such a different perspective um, on how the world is moving, how to engage people in our age group with physical therapy, especially with social media coming out. You know, so many 
uh, you know, PTs coming out there are, are starting to do like quick videos. Like we have Lindsay who does so many things that are informative uh, on social media and, and just others to get engagement, but not just to our community, but to those around us to tell them about movement and in a way that, that, that is quick and digestible. Um, so you guys, you guys have so much greatness in you. Let's use that. And even if you don't get on the board, there's so many other opportunities that we can help you guide towards. And like I said, again, if there's something that's not out there that you're passionate about, then just do it. Find a way to do it. And you're gonna make great, great uh, changes within the profession. Um, so I think I see another question here coming out. Hold on, let me read through these. <laughs> Dan, all right, I like that. I'm, Cecily, I haven't seen you dance, so we're gonna have to check that out. I'm gonna check, make sure Dan, Dan's saying the truth there. But Chase has another question here. He says, what networking tips do you have for meetings and conferences when we're allowed to return to in-person events, especially for those attending and watching who may not be extroverted? Why you, why you don't say it on me like that, Chase? Why, why, why you Chase, I'm so glad you added that in there um, because there are so, so many of us, in, introverts, ambiverts, extroverts, people who function as extroverts, but they're really introverts, you know, all that. Um, I think it, it comes to the best yes, right? It comes to the best yes. So there are so many opportunities. And so as Dan pointed out, you can figure out the opportunities that are right for you. And I'll give you examples like um, the awards committee. There's, there's always an awards committee. And the awards committees, for example, they need people to do the work, to review things. So it's not necessarily all of the opportunities are not necessarily on stage or on the dance floor or um, you know, speaking at the House of Delegates, there are so many things that happen behind the scenes that are so pivotal and so important. Um, and we need people doing that. So writing, writing the people who actually write the policies, the people who actually um, connect in, in the written word, we still need a lot of that happening. And there's a lot of um, different, and I'm sure uh, Gustavo, you can tell us what kinds of things are actually happening right now at the student assembly, but there in all the academies and also the chapters, we need people of all different kinds of people with all different kinds of ideas. And I would actually tell Dan that some people, they need to focus on one thing. If you've read that book, one thing. And other people, they wanna be riding a unicycle, juggling fire knives with an eye patch and one hand behind the back and um, an amputated right leg. And you know that's what we do. And we just try not to drop the glass balls. You know, you just keep juggling away and you're gonna drop stuff every day, but you just try to figure out what are the most important things to keep in the air and keep those things in the air. And, and that's okay too. If you're the kind of person who likes to be on a lot of different committees or likes to engage with a lot of different people, that's okay too. I appreciate that, Cecily. I like the analogy. Um, the the other thing I think I would add to Chase's question. So I, I'm one of those uh, introverts that can function like an extrovert. Like I, I can, I, if I need to, I can, I can make it happen. But uh, a couple of things that are good opportunities. So with our sections and academies, I can't stress enough, as Cecily said, the awards committee, that's a great way to get to know people and be behind the scenes. Programming committees are huge too. So that was where I got involved actually meeting a lot of my mentors in scholarly research and teaching was I got to be on a programming committee and read through reviews and abstracts of what people were submitting for CSM, for Next, or for other conferences. And you get a chance to meet those people. You interact with them via email. It's a, it's a nice kind of low key interaction where you get to meet people that can really help forward your career. Um, and then you get an insight into how kind of conferences and programming work and you're not on the stage, you're not having to do all that stuff. Um, so I think those are great opportunities. I'm also gonna stress to you in, in our profession, I think more than any others, direct messaging people you're interested in talking to. Social media, people that are out there, you know, you can just send them a message and say, hey, you don't know me, but I'm a student, I'm a new grad, and I'm really interested in what you do. You know, Cecily, I understand you know a lot about pelvic health, and I know that you're a good mentor because people have talked about your name. Do you mind? Could we meet? Could we email back and forth? Something that we could kind of talk about, and that's really common in our profession. So I think, again, going back to my original statement, ask the first question. Put yourself out there and allow yourself that question, but as a, a more introverted thing, it doesn't have to be, hey, I saw Cecily and tried to pick her out at a big social event. It was, hey, I messaged her and we chatted on the phone for 30 minutes. And, and I really got to understand what some involvement opportunities were. Um, my favorite time when I was president of APTA Georgia was getting the random email from some student, especially when it was not an assignment. 
especially when it was not an assignment, but just getting the email of, hey, I don't know where to start. Where do I get involved? And that usually turned into like a two hour phone call where it was like, let me tell you everything I know and let's work through where you're at and where we can help get you involved. Um, but those are the things in our profession, just reach out, ask the question. Oh, thank you for that. And you know, I like to piggyback on that, that email. I know something, uh, and I wish I learned this earlier. I really do. And I think Teo actually does a really great job because I know me and Teo talked about this, uh, but just either networking and, and doing what you're saying, email people. Teo told me one day we we're on a call uh, between me, Patrick and Teo and Teo was like, when I'm not in school and I'm not doing non-com or some bot stuff, I'm networking like all the time. And I was like, dang, man, like, <laughs> why did, why didn't I know that? <laughs> why didn't I know just to, just to send that quick email, send that, that quick tweet and, uh, and I know sometimes it can be nervous, especially as a student, like, who is this guy? Like, like, like they're not going to know me. They're not going to respond. Worst thing they're going to say is, is no, we can't meet. Like, ain't nothing. That's the worst thing that can happen. So if that's the worst thing. Everything goes up from there. Um, and usually most of my time, I would say 90% of the time they respond back um, and they say, yeah, let's meet up. Let's talk. Um, and those other 10% either because they get, they do have so many messages or they've been busy. So I have to repeat again. Um, but I have yet to get a note. Uh, from someone that I really wanted to talk to, uh, to say, hey, they don't want to network. So think about that. There's so many things out there and, and, and so many different interest groups. One thing that I super got pumped and this, and I had to wait to get onto the board of directors was to learn about the global health SIG and like know that there's a SIG out there with PTs going around the world, doing amazing things. And they even had a little pub night at CSM and I found this out three weeks after our last CSM. And I was so mad because I was like, oh, we're not going to get CSM again. But the next one we have in person, I'm going to that global SIG. I'm hanging out with these PTs. And I'm going to learn some stories um, that, that uh, by reaching out to one of their uh, leaders in the SIG, um, she was already giving me ideas of what she did backpacking uh, and, and, and Southeast Asia, going to Australia, going to Latin America and Europe um, as a PT. And I was just like, Phew mind blown so multiple sigs out there um uh, just with different things um one other question uh, another question from Lindsay, and also again for everyone who's on the call please if you have any questions type them in there this is a really good time uh lindsey asked what insight have you gained about apta apta sorry and the profession from your various roles how much insanely bigger I thought it was even when I was on the student assembly board. Um, there are so many moving pieces and working parts to the APTA. And that being said, again, it offers so many opportunities for involvement. So, you know, I, I got involved as a student. I was like, this is our national association. I know that there's some staff. I know there's a board of directors. And through the Student Assembly Board, I got to learn a lot about the governance of our association, how that works. And then it trickled down from there and the, the sections and academies, the chapters, everything else that there is that makes our association run, but each in its own distinct, separate, important way. You know, we all work together and most of the time we're working on some of the same initiatives uh, as overarching goals, but we've got very different areas where you can really pursue your passion. So I think being involved in that just blew my mind of seeing how big the association really is um, and, and kind of allow to explore more of my passion through that. I'm gonna go back a step. So I was thinking back to, um, I'm involved with research as I alluded to, I do some chronic pain research and the way that I got involved with that is using Teo's method in that I went to a talk very similar to this one. And I saw um, Jay Shaw and Lynn Gerber speaking and I messaged them afterwards and I said, hey, you're at NIH, I'm in Northern Virginia. Can I come and just spend the day with you and watch you do what you do? And so I went and I spent the day and connected and then they needed somebody for their research and there, boom, I was in. And so now I've been doing research with them for five years because I use Teo's method of just connecting. Um, so that's, I mean, I, I admire those of you who are already doing that and making your connections and through those connections back to APTA through those connections, you will not only find um, your purpose and meaning in the various different millions of opportunities you could get involved with, but you'll find 
um, the colleagues that you respect the most who will help you throughout your career, as Joe has helped us, as Dan has helped me, as we've all um, helped one another, you find your sort of like friends for life in that um, and I, that, that is really what it's all about is those connections that you make for life. The people that, you know, from Sabat, I, um, when we were looking back at this, I was thinking, oh, look at these people, look at those people that I connected with. And we're still friends today, 15, 20 years later. Um, and if I have a question, you know, I can text Dan and be like, Hey, do you know anybody in Georgia who does this? Or, Hey, Joe, do you know anybody who does that? And, and you can message them and they get right back to you with whatever you need to help you, or they'll put you in touch with that person that can help you. So you'll find your purpose and meaning at APTA and you'll find your best friends for the rest of your life. <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. The one, oof, I go to conferences to get build up and there's always so much great information, but piggybacking on what Cecily said, those friends that I've met because of being involved, not just students, but professionals, and just even just hanging out at the booths or just saying what's up or just meeting up for food or, or going dancing later on that night, I go back home and I'm like, let's go, let's, 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 let's do what we got to do that hashtag PT fam, which I wonder who made that up, who made hashtag PT fam, I want to know, uh, but just to give some background to, to the students here, do you, does anybody know, does anybody know what year the student assembly board of directors came about, does anybody know, I want you to type it in the chat if you know, um, and by the end of it, we'll, we'll, we'll get to it. Um, but now, now we got, now I got a real serious question. This is going to be a heavy hitter question right here. Okay. Um, what is one of those funny or bonding moments that you had that, that stays with you to this day, um, uh, from, from being involved as a student? What's one of those moments that when you're having maybe a rough day or, or, or something of the sorts, you, you can just go back to um and and just ooh, put a, put a smile on your face from your from your from your time involved on the student assembly board of directors don't cry though go ahead dan i know you i know yours so oh well i got a few oh, you, you have so many <laughs> trying to figure out which one i which one's okay to share um i'm having the same problem actually the one that i want to share is least likely that i want it to be recorded and and also shared <laughs> Um, I, I think mine, the thing that I look back on and it's, it's, it's not so much as a funny moment, but just a proud moment is, and, and it kind of relates. I saw a great question in the chat that I hope we get to, um, from Devin, but you know, the student assembly board, we got to know our family that, that was our, our PT fam with, with our board members. And I still look back finally on, uh, my board, and we actually still have a group text where we text each other now nearly 11 years later when things come up, uh, just to say hey and talk about stuff. But watching not only where each of them went on the board, but where they inspired others. So we were talking about like when people weren't elected, what happened? And, and looking back on the board and the slate that I ran with and what everyone is doing and how engaged they stayed, it was just awesome to see that passion. And it really speaks getting individuals who are really passionate about what they want to do but seeing my board specifically they were an outstanding just group of individuals who are still involved in the profession passionate you know we've got people involved in roles in delegate and pta caucus and and all sorts of stuff it's just a neat moment to see um and it speaks to uh, there was a question there you know again our job if you get elected as a leader is to engage others in leadership. It's not to, not to lead, not to direct, but it's to engage everybody along the way. And that was something that I saw. Um, funny story, and Lisa McLaughlin's on the call, I turned the lights off at the old APTA headquarters because my strategic planning meeting on the board ran way, way, way too long. And that's my funny story is I was the person who actually got the power and the lights to turn off in our building and we continued with our strategic planning meeting in the dark it was amazing dan that's great um i think i'm gonna i'm gonna dovetail a little bit on what dan said although although dan i think i gotta be honest with you i think this speaks to why 
you know, your meetings till the middle of the night maybe speaks to why Devin is having trouble getting other people involved, perhaps. I don't know, <laughs> but <laughs> I've been on meetings with you before. They're super fun, but yeah, no, I don't want to go in the middle of the night in the dark. I don't know. Um, but, you know, I mine are much less serious, and and but they speak to Devin's point and also to Dan's point as well. Um, you know, I remember we we met in October, late October, in um, and for the student um, conclave, and we had this great Halloween party, <clears throat> epic Halloween party. Everybody dresses up. I still remember what I wore. I remember all the music, and we were introduced, and they like they had songs for each person, you know, and we came out to these songs, and it was like a surprise, right? It was a surprise and I still remember the song they picked for me was Brick House. And I, I'm, I'm a little bit offended, a little bit, but I still go back to that in my mind and we have such good laughs from the dancing. We had a dance competition after that. And I think Devin, the point is that people wanna be involved because you're having fun and you're getting it done. Like you're gonna, you're changing the world. I mean, you know, back when we were doing this it's like they were eradicating smoking, you know the whole smoking campaign. And don't you wanna be a part of things like that? I mean, don't you wanna be a part of things that are like groundbreaking and, and changing society, transforming society, but don't you also wanna have a lot of fun? I mean, maybe you wanna be in meetings in the dark till the middle of the night, I don't know. But you know, for you, for you introverts that wanna sit in meetings till then, that's great. But you also may wanna go dancing with Joe Black because he's a great dancer. He will outlast all of you. He can dance all through the night, um, but also he knows all the things you wanna know and who you need to connect with. and. And so you're hanging out on the dance floor and Joe Black's like, hey, let me introduce you to my friend who, who he does the acute care, you know, whatever, or let me introduce you to this person. They invented dry needling or, you know, they brought dry needling to the United States or whatever. I mean, you know, there's always something um, to know, but we're having a lot of fun doing it. And people want to be involved with stuff that's fun. They want to do stuff that inspires them, that gives them purpose and meaning that's really fun. So. If I, Gustavo, so if I can jump back in, because I really want to, I really want to answer part of Devin's question too. Um, when she's talking about what's your biggest advice for getting others to want to be involved, and that goes back actually to, I'm doing better on now, is, you know, I think a lot of us, if you're on this call, you're a passionate leader. There's a lot of stuff you want to tell everybody, your fellow students, new graduates, when you get in the workplace and you're seeing people who aren't members, who are your seniors and things like that, you wanna tell them everything about the profession. And I think what we've gotta do first, if we wanna get people involved is be better listeners. Um, you know, the first step is not, hey, let me tell you all these ways you can get involved because we really don't know. People are overwhelmed, there's a lot going on, they may not have the time to commit and they may feel like it's a bigger commitment than it really is. So I always start with the listening and just start with, you know, what, what's your passion? What do you want to, what do you want to, in this profession? What do you want to have happen? And then you can ask the questions. Do you know there are ways that you can be involved to make those things happen? Do you know about these routes or directions? And then how can I help you, you know, get to that point? Sometimes for people, it's just opening the door and listening. And once they've been heard, they know that you've got your kind of best intentions for them. It's a great way to get people engaged. And then you also get a gauge on what their stress level is and what they want their involvement to be. Um, you know, any involvement is good involvement. Even if it's just, if I get somebody to send uh, an APTA take action email, you know, a pre-written email to one legislator one time, that's one positive action we've been able to do. So it's always listening and finding ways to somebody where they're at at that moment. No. Thank you both for, for sharing that. And, you know, I want to give a shout out to the, to the current board of directors, to all of them. Um, this year, especially this year, and, and also you students, you guys have been resilient. This year has come with, with challenges that were unforeseen, um, weren't expecting to be maybe in leadership roles in this type of capacity where we're kind of distanced just through, through, through a camera and a microphone and, and still trying to organize events and, and get things together without having that necessarily in-person um, experience. And, and that's something that I, that I love about this board is that they knew that this was, was coming and they said, hey, I'm here to take that challenge. You know, and I hope here soon, you know, COVID willing, uh, you know, we can all meet up together um, in some of these upcoming APT events, um, you know, that we're, we're still waiting on, of course, to see if there's, there's any approval to do in person. Um, but 
they're still here. They're engaged. They're working on projects. I mean, even this year, we came out with that project committee through the Sabat and initiatives through different members who were passionate about something and said, hey, let's make it happen. Um, and then students um, as well who are taking those leadership roles uh, in their local areas. You know, that's so awesome, guys. Keep it up because it inspires me um, because I came into the Sabat with a different perspective, seeing how things were pre-COVID. Um, and one of my funniest memories that I, you know, I want to relate, I want to, I want to relate with y'all is a, is a game we had with, with uh, so the bot that I served on the first year um, was uh, we were there with Usura playing a game called code names, all of us there. And if you, if you know the game, you know, the game, if you don't, you can look it up, but she was, I was taking my time trying to answer this and trying to figure out a word. And, and she just yells at me and like, and Usura is, 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 is so loving and kind, but she, I looks at me in my eyes and is like, hey, do it, coward. Oh my, I lost it. I almost died. <laughs> but I, that's one of those fond memories that, that I love to go to. And, and going to your question, Devin, I, I really speak with Dan. Dan, I think, worded very well. I, I ask people, you know, why get involved or, 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 or why not get involved? And, and a lot of the times is, is they just feel like they need to be heard. And, and someone who feels heard um, brings that importance to them um, because we just don't know what happens in everybody's lives. And then that way we can say, you know, hey, maybe you can't, maybe this, doing this position that you know, requires so much time, but there's this other initiative, just writing a letter to your congressman um, or, or doing some other kind of, even just retweeting and tweeting things or, or, or things of that sort. But really just kind of asking that question, figuring out what they have, uh, you know, their barriers and so forth or guiding them towards opportunities that maybe they didn't know existed um, or helping them, just empowering them to, to create that opportunity uh, for others. Because again, there's greatness in you, y'all. Y'all are so powerful. Y'all are so inspiring and y'all are gonna do amazing things. Um, but I do wanna, Devin, just you know, ask that question also for current board members. So there's any current board member on here right now that kind of wants to, answer that question that Devin put on there, please feel free uh, to do so. Um, ah, I saw an anomaly already posted, so I'll leave that one there. Lindsay. So I guess I've, I've always been the kind of person too, I've like, I want everyone to be involved. I want everyone to be as passionate as I am. And I kind of had to realize that that's not possible. Um, it doesn't matter how passionate I am and how much I tell them about it. And like what I do and what APTA has to offer, there's always gonna be those people who are like, it's not for me and that's okay. Like I've just had to come to accept that that is like, they're just, it's not the right time for them or they're not as interested. Um, but if I can make even a small impact, if I can get even one other person to want to get involved, maybe two other people, three other people, like that means so much to me. And I have seen personally, um, even just the couple people that I have inspired, they go on to then inspire other people. And it becomes really this like um, ripple effect of, of inspiration and people wanting to get engaged and involved. So I think sometimes we, we get caught up and we're like, everyone in our class needs to be engaged and involved and excited about it. And like, sometimes that's not gonna happen, but just a couple people getting engaged and involved is contagious and will encourage other people to do the same. So start small watch it grow. Outstanding points, Lindsay. And, and I think one of the other lessons I've learned along the way that's similar is, you know, and I'm going to promote APTA membership and APTA involvement, but also realize that if somebody isn't a member, that doesn't mean that they're not involved, they're not enhancing the profession. Um, you know, I tell my students when they go out, if along the way, you decide that membership is not of value to you anymore. The thing that I'm gonna ask of you is that you practice to the top of your license. Because every time you promote excellence in practice, you're promoting the profession, whether you're a member or not, you're making us stronger. Um, and so there are things that people are passionate about that you just have to give them that opportunity to grow in. And that's, you know, it's a great way when I engage with people in our chapter, you know, I ask the questions of, you know, what would be more beneficial to you to make you become a member or want you to become a member, but also I, I leave the conversation with, hey, if you don't become a member, that's okay. I still promote that you practice at the top of your license and we move forward as a profession, you know, because at the end of the day, we're all still doing the same job, member or not. Thank you for that, Dan. 
I just want to add uh, to that as well. Um, one of the biggest things I had to struggle with, I think, is the same that everybody else has really talked about, um, but also kind of it, it, it's a timeline too, right? So there could be somebody who is a perfect fit for a position you know they would rock it or um, you think that they would be really interested in, in the, and deep down they are and it's just not the right time for them. So just because somebody's not necessarily interested right now, who knows what the next year holds or however much longer. Um, so not to say uh, give up hope on them, but um, you know, visit in, check in on them every now and again um, if there's something else, uh, because maybe the next time you talk to them, uh, they'll be in a completely different headspace. Thank you, Chase. Very, very good, very good. I definitely, definitely pay you back on that. Um, so we're coming to the end of our time. And, you know, I want to let you guys know we're going to do some breakout rooms. We're going to we're going to set up some breakout rooms for you students. If you want to stay on, please stay on. We'll, we'll, we'll be short. We won't be too long. Um, but please fill out that document or that doc uh, with that social media handles, because keep the conversation going, guys. It's been hard. It's been tough. I know it. But don't stop trying to engage. Don't stop trying to connect, because this is how we build our networks, not just with students, but even professionals. Reach out to Dan, reach out to Cecily, reach out to Joe. These are people that have, have set the example of where we can go and even beyond that to work on their shoulders um, and what direction they can help us go into or where they can connect us maybe with somebody that, 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 um, that we haven't met yet. So please, please use those networks um, as best as possible and follow that, that, that example from Teo. When he's not studying, when he's not doing some bot stuff, the man's out there networking um, and, and getting connected. So um, thank you, Cecily, Dan, for coming on this evening, giving your time, speaking about your experience, telling them about the hashtag PT fam and showing that Sabad love. Thank you. Most, most definitely appreciate it uh, for y'all coming on this evening, especially with your, with your busy lives and so forth on a Sunday. Um, but please stay on if you would like. I'm about to bust out into these breakout rooms. Uh, and then we shall go from there. All right. I think you should just be able to tell you. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> so I think it's just me and you in here with Lisa. You can probably, oh, there you go. You just uh, have to make sure you stop recording. I stop recording? Okay. Mm -hmm. I don't even remember starting it.